Hello everyone, it's Shinto being here playing some more Warhammer Combat Cards Campaign Mode. In this one we have a chance to unlock a new Custodes card. It's a 21 point bodyguard with shields, uh, which makes it the uh, third Custodes bodyguard with shields. It's quite a few. Uh, we also, if you go over to the shop, have a Custodes Combat Patrol for 900 plasma. Uh, would it be smart of me to get this? No. Uh, I have absolutely no need of these cards, but uh, I really love the look of some of these models. We finally have some Custodes with their helmets on. So we got the Blade Champion here, an epic card with Target Acquired and Melee Scout. And then we got the Custodian Warden with Melee Scout as well. Uh, the Vexilius Praetor with Inspiring Presence. Uh, this guy, of course, you get from the Mission Rewards. And then we got the two older guys, the Shield Captain and the Alaris Custodian. Also, yet another new card uh, over here, which you do have to purchase with money, is the uh, Shield Captain, another epic with Inspiring Presence and Melee Scout. So a lot of these Custodius cards being able to boost your melee attack through the, uh, the Scout trait. Uh, so in this campaign, the keywords include uh, Inquisitors and Assassins. So that was the build I was running at first. I was, I'm actually running Magos Dominus for this one. For the modifiers, you only have 150 deck points and 6 bodyguard slots. We got boarding actions, which really limits your choices down to like a handful of infantry and bulky cards. And then we got cut off the head as well. So the Inquisitors and Assassins actually work really well. Uh, that's what I was running, but I do want to show you what the uh, new and improved Custodes look like. Again, with the Custodes Battle Pass this season. Uh, some of these older guys got a significant boost to their stats. So we got the Shield Captain, Alaris Custodian, and Trajan Valoris uh, alongside Alea and Valerian, who are still quite strong. And then to combo with uh, Magos Dominus' special rule, we got one Endless Infantry, and then the Hospitaller with Medicae. And the Tech Priest himself uh, is not too incredibly strong. He does actually have a decent ranged attack now. And he has some extra healing through the Medicaid trait. But yeah, let's go ahead and deploy. Uh, we are currently at level 21. Uh, this is the 24th match in the campaign. I did lose one battle because uh, uh, of an unfortunate incident involving uh, Illic Nightspear sniping my highest cost bodyguard. Uh, which, of course, boosted the attack stats of all of the enemy cards uh, because it cut off the head. So yeah, I lost that one pretty badly, but uh, every other match I have uh, been able to win with Magos Dominus, who's again one of the weaker warlords, but uh, I think he actually does decently uh, with Cut Off the Head because it just helps to keep your high cost cards alive. Now we're up against Eldrod, who is at level 4. Uh, let's go ahead and I guess we'll drop this guy first. Actually, that was probably not a very good idea, but uh, as long as we can keep it across from the Farseer, because they'll definitely be going Psychic. Uh, let's go with... Actually, I think we'll drop Alea and Valerian here first. And we have to be kind of careful here. Um, I think we'll... Yeah, Shield Captain might be good. So yeah, wait, there are 27 points, 26 points. Uh, you don't want to drop Trajan Valoris first, obviously, because... Um, he is the highest cost card in the deck. So we'll see, yeah, we'll see what we can do here with uh, this setup. And so immediately uh, our infantry dude dies, but that's going to just heal everything up by 20. And then I suppose we can go, I mean, I guess we'll go ranged for now. It's not really that much damage, but uh, at the moment, Alea and Valerian is the highest cost card on the field. So we don't really want... Uh, them to be taking too much damage just yet and we also want to try to kill uh, the Farseer so I might just go and drop I mean I'm well let me think here 28 points actually this this might be a good option to the Alaris custodian but we'll just bide our time here just a little bit longer keep these guys uh, alive with the, the Medicaid here and we'll just uh, yeah I guess we'll go we'll go melee Got a decent amount of health on our guys. Okay, and I... Well, they're actually switching to melee. That's a lot of damage right there. Now, is the Hospitaller going to go down on the next turn? They're actually moving their guys over, but the Ranger 
For some reason, they really just want that one dead. Uh, this is actually perfect because we're going to get a, a big boost to our stats here uh, from killing the Farseer with the first attack. But uh, the Hospitaller goes down to the Death Blow, and yeah, we take some extra damage there. Um, let's look at the stats here. 135. So now, obviously, we want to shift the priority threat onto something else, but uh, we don't want to bring him out quite yet, so let's just go with uh, the Alaris Custodian, who will now be the highest cost card on my side. And Shield Captain has uh, quite a bit of damage. But yeah, they're going to be able to hit pretty hard here. They're going ranged. Luckily, the Shield blocks most of the damage from the Ranger there. Okay, this is going to be kind of painful, but we are going to continue to go melee. Going to be able to knock out the Ranger and bring down uh, their Scorpion dude, uh, Karendris, down a little bit. Uh, they've got target acquired, but guess what? We're just going to drop Trajan Valoris right here in the middle. This Furious Charge is going to knock out Karandris, and that's going to give us a massive boost to our stats. Uh, bringing back some of the Inspiring Presence, too, with the secondary trait from uh, Trajan. That's 30 attack stats to everything. Boom! And we are taking quite a bit of damage, but uh, the Shield Captain punching back real hard. And now Eldrod is the last man to arrive and we can easily take him down with a total of 384 melee so yeah that worked out uh, perfectly actually able to make use of every all of the bodyguards uh, we were able to keep our warlord nice and safe in reserve and uh, yeah it's a pretty fun build I mean normally I don't really like boarding actions I think it's uh, fairly boring because you can't really use most of your collection but it is kind of fun once in a while to sort of change up uh, your deck and use some bodyguards that you don't normally use. Uh, the one nice thing about going Inquisitors and Assassins is a lot of them have anti-infantry. And most of the enemy cards are going to be infantry in boarding action. So uh, that deck also works quite well. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.